I've been diving blue holes, caverns, and cenotes since I was a teenager, and of all the places on earth I've explored, nothing, nothing feels as mysterious or as deeply unsettling as underwater caves. You drop beneath the limestone and suddenly the world goes silent. No waves, no fish, no color. Just a ceiling above you, a floor below you, and an endless black corridor stretching into who knows what. People think the deep ocean is scary, but caves? Caves feel alive, like they're hiding something. And they are. Because if you know where to look, these pitch black labyrinths are home to some of the strangest, rarest, and most evolution-breaking animals on the planet. Tonight, we're diving straight into that world, starting in the sunlight, and sinking deeper until we reach places few humans have ever seen. My name is Ned, and this is The Curious Current. Come with me as we explore the eerie wonder of cave diving and cave ecosystems. A cenote looks like nothing special from the surface, a sinkhole ringed by jungle. But underwater, it opens like a throat. These are collapse points in vast limestone networks formed when acidic rainwater eats into rock for tens of thousands of years. Beneath the entrance, the world is turquoise and bright. Tree roots dangle overhead like chandeliers. Stalagmites rise from the floor like ancient pillars. But as you swim inward, the limestone narrows, and less light reaches you. White walls begin to swallow color. The water becomes clearer than air, filtered by rock so thoroughly it almost disappears. This is the twilight zone of the cave, where sunlight still flickers, but biology is already preparing for its absence. You start to notice pale fish moving differently. Their bodies are fairly translucent. Their pupils are large, hungry for any photon they can steal. These are close relatives of the Mexican blind cave Tetra, but push deeper where the rock squeezes out the last rays of light and their true cave forms appear. Eyeless, milky white fish whose skulls have sealed over like porcelain. Their world is pressure waves and dissolved chemicals, a tapestry painted in vibrations. With vision useless, their lateral lines become their superpower, letting them sense the tiny displacement fields caused by swimming piers or drifting insects. In caves, the first rule of evolution is simple. Don't waste energy on what doesn't exist. Light doesn't exist here, so eyes don't either. Beyond the twilight zone, the geometry changes. Limestone that was once open and cathedral-like closes into tight restrictions. The ceiling dips low. Passages turn into tubes. Your bubbles tap up against stone like distant drums. And this shift in shape changes the chemistry too. Flow slows, oxygen drops, nutrients become scarce, limited to whatever organic matter drifts in from the world above. Here, elongated ghost shapes slip through your light. These are the eel-bodied cave specialists, including the Mexican blind swamp eel. In these oxygen-poor waters, gills alone aren't enough, so they absorb oxygen directly through their skin. Their bodies stretch thin to maximize surface area, like living ribbons adapted for the tightest crevices in the aquifer. Some of these flooded tunnels might contain fewer than 10 individuals. Some chambers, maybe only one. This isn't an ecosystem in the traditional sense. It's survival carved into stone. Continue deeper, and the cave eventually tells you, stop. A restriction too tight, a drop-off too deep, a fracture whose diameter is smaller than your shoulders. This is where human exploration ends, but the cave does not. Below these boundaries lie long, branching conduits where freshwater meets seawater. These mixing zones form anchialine caves, environments that shift with tides despite being sealed under rock. These caves breathe with the moon. When the tide rises, seawater pushes in. When it falls, fresh water slides back. Farther down, whether in the Bahamas, the Yucatan, or Australia, you reach a point where the water barely moves at all. These are stagnation zones, often layered like a geological parfait. You have an oxygenated freshwater zone at the top, a mixing zone where chemical reactions strip out oxygen, and a sulfitic, anoxic water at the bottom. The chemical stratification is stable for centuries. And living in those deepest layers are some of the Earth's strangest crustaceans, remipedes. These animals are blind, they're pale, and they have dozens of paddle-like legs moving in hypnotic rhythm. They drift through the water column like underwater centipedes, swimming on their backs. Remipedes possess venomous fangs, one of the only crustacean groups to do so, injecting enzymes that dissolve prey from the inside. Their evolutionary lineage is so old that some biologists think that they may be the surviving analogs of early marine arthropods like lobsters and crabs. 
In this part of the cave, biology feels less like adaptation and more like time travel. Now, not all caves are underwater tunnels. Some are vertical fractures filled with geothermal water. One of the most famous is Devil's Hole in Nevada, a slit in the desert limestone that drops into a shimmering blue pool. And perched on a shallow submerged shelf inside that shaft is the entire species population of the Devil's Hole pupfish. The most isolated fish on Earth lives in a single room of water, a habitat barely the size of a two-car garage. The water is hot, the oxygen is low, the walls close around them like a biological prison. But they glow a brilliant metallic blue, a reminder that even the tiniest, harshest habitats can produce beauty. Now cross the world to southern Europe and the limestone caves widen into grand, flood-carved chambers. Here, fresh water circulates so slowly it feels motionless. In this dreamlike stillness lives the Olm, the ultimate cave specialist. Long-bodied, pink-gilled, ghost-pale. This is a salamander built for patience. The Olm can live for over a century, long enough to watch its own ecosystem change around it. It can go a decade without food, relying on astonishing metabolic efficiency. And it senses prey not by sight, but by detecting tiny electrical fields from moving organisms. The Olm is not adapted to darkness. It is sculpted by it, a creature that makes the cave feel alive, as if the stone itself learned to swim. What makes cave life so mesmerizing is that the caves dictate every rule. No light, vision collapses. Geological isolation, species become evolutionary islands. A cave is a laboratory with stone walls and absolute darkness. It doesn't give up energy easily, and the organisms that survive inside rewrite themselves to match those constraints. These flooded tunnels and ancient karst chambers show us that life isn't fragile. It's adaptable in ways we're only beginning to understand. We've mapped less than 1% of the world's underwater caves, which means we know much more about the moon than we know about these deep places of our own planet. And every one we enter seems stranger than the last. Stay curious, stay current, and I'll see you in the dark.